the first year of my PhD was the most awkward moment in my life because for the first time I have no schedule, I have nowhere to have to show up to, I am owning my whole timetable and having that flexibility and power is dangerous. There will be days that I spend all the day at the desk thinking that I'll be writing but nothing comes out and the whole day just slipped. In some way as PhD we are all a victim of procrastination. There are times that I feel unproductive and I spend long hours dwelling on projects and I couldn't complete it. And after a few months I get really anxious. I refuse to meet my friends, I refuse to even spend time with family. The guilt and the anxiety of owning a project that's so flexible is a vicious cycle. When you don't do any work in the morning, you will try to make it up in the midnight and very late afternoon. If that sounds like you, I hope you will keep watching. I'm Vera Chen from PhD Coffee Time. If my sharing is helping you and you're interested in my content, I'm going to make videos every week. Please make sure to hit subscribe to content that are going to motivate you and prepare you for your PhD project. You have 24 hours to do your work but it seems 24 hours was never enough. But there is a good news because not all 24 hours are created equal. Just like commercial in the TV, they are not all the same price. It depends on what hour you're going to pay for your commercial because at the peak hour there will be more people watching it and the price of the commercial is higher. As a researcher, you must identify your prime time for the challenging task, your writing task, or something that you must learn for the first time that requires the most of your concentration and focus. If you make sure you secure your most productive and creative hour of the day, congratulations, you are getting 80% of your productivity harness with that focused 20% time. Remember in the last video, I've talked about how to make a to-do list and how to visualize all the tasks using a Kanban board. That's where you can fit with the 80% of not so productive time, all the trivial little tasks that might be repetitive, that might be just meetings, things that you just need to show up to. They can be going to all the hour that you are not the most creative and productive. When I go to work in the first hour in the morning, they are the most valuable time because my brain is the most fresh and I can read and write a lot better. The afternoon, I may have to struggle using a lot more energy than in the morning. So you have to know yourself. My afternoon activities that are lower bandwidth and I can process with half my brain so-called are things like labeling tubes in the lab, PDF downloading, organizing of my folder so that the next day I can start reading and writing right off the bat. And I hope you will identify your time in the day that is going to work for you for repetitive tasks, demanding tasks. The first half of what I've just said was not all hours are created equal. That's a good news. The second piece of good news is not all tasks in your day are created equal. There are four categories if you want to look into all your tasks in the day. The urgent and important tasks that could be something that you procrastinated and somehow didn't get it done and it become urgent and important. But there's a lot of tasks that are urgent and important because there were not enough communication with your colleagues and somehow it become an urgent task that are also important. But as a foreigner, there are also urgent and important tasks like visa, appointment. The non-urgent and important tasks, they are the meat of your whole project that you must dedicate the prime hours and take care of them. Your experiment, your thesis writing, writing emails, communicating the milestone and challenges of projects. Most of the time, they are not urgent. So it requires discipline. Schedule your day and make sure you tackle all of these important tasks as your first priority. And trust me, once you get these non-urgent and important tasks done, it greatly reduces your anxiety level and you will feel a lot more productive 
and when you have a break in the weekend, you will feel guilt free. When you have urgent and unimportant task, you can think of to delegate to someone. For example, if your professor asks you to copy a book page by page, you might be able to find help in the library. Or if you have students in your lab, they might be available to help and the book may be helpful to that student as well as a reading. By learning to delegate, you are also freeing up your day. Your day could be a lot longer if you don't know how to delegate. Let's talk about what's non-urgent and not important. Maybe the first thing is you can think of someone come to your office and just ask for your attention and maybe they are just trying to have a chat and take a break and they become a downward spiral of unproductivity. Some of the days you may have to focus and say no to those distractions. Unimportant and non-urgent task also includes yourself. You are also your own enemy sometimes. You may be tempted to go and check social media, check your email that it disrupt your flow. You can unplug your internet cable if you don't need it. You can be on flight mode on your phone. During the working hour, you should try to reduce anything that is non-urgent and unimportant. If you want to get your things done, there are three advice. You can delete, you can reduce, you can reschedule. Delete meaning you just say, no, I'm sorry. Or you can say, we can have 15 minutes and get, get it over with, but set a time limit. Or you can say, I'm happy to chat with you, but let's catch after work and we can have a tea and have an hour of catching up so then we can really do this properly instead of spending your working hour and your productive time not going to push your project forward and then you're going to miss the next party. There's a lot of time that I could cut from doing less unimportant tasks that are urgent or non-urgent and that really free up my day to focus on my research. I believe if you do most of the important and non-urgent tasks as scheduled in your day, you might just need eight hours in your day instead of feeling so exhausted and overwhelmed. There are days in research that we still need to work the weekend, we still need to pull the long hour. I'm not saying this is not happening, but I hope that being more intentional to how we spend our energy is going to help you to be the most effective researcher that you could be. If we want to do more in less time, it's critical to talk about speed. You know, it's like measuring an athlete in the gym, how much weight they, they can lift with the bicep, how much weight you can squat with your leg. As scientists, if we measure our throughput on different tasks that we do in the lab, in the difficulty level that we are measuring, then you are more on top of your day. For example, I know my PCR reaction is going to take two hours and extracting RNA is going to take five hours. I know because I have paid a close attention to my day and I track every hour, not maybe not. By the end of the day when I finish my work, I have a habit of writing down the numbers of how many hours I think I spend in meetings, how many hours I've spent in this protocol. And when I'm writing academic writing, it's, as I mentioned, in the prime time, every minute counts. So I have started building the habit of using a timer. Um, there's a free timer. You can check it out called toggle.com or you can just use a simple timer on an Excel spreadsheet of uh, counting time. You, you will find out how much you can do maybe in the measurable chunks of 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And with that, you're going to know what you can do to improve. Everyone's different in the flexibility level or your muscle strength. It's the same for us as a speed of writing content as scientists. We also may have different difficulty level of contents. Two pages in physics is probably a lot more difficult than writing two pages of biology because of the mathematics that is going to be involved in resolving two pages of physics paper. The point is you must compare to yourself from yesterday to tomorrow. And if you are improving in speed, then that is something you can keep 
as a record to motivate yourself to do more tomorrow. First, when you are tracking your time, you're going to value time a lot more because in some way in your, in your inside yourself, you're trying to compete with that timer. Have you ever microwave anything? You feel like you are waiting for three minutes and you try to clean the table and you try to organize. You're going to clean the kitchen and you come back in three minutes and, and then your popcorn is ready. It's the same mindset. As soon as you set the timer, it, give, it created two environment. When you're impatient, your timer is going to remind you it's only been eight minutes. Okay, I'm going to go back and do this writing and reading as I assume I have the ability to. It's like someone tell me jumping jack for 30 seconds, then I'm going to do jumping jack and I'm committed to it. To count down from five, four, three, two, one. And you will start whatever you needed yourself to start doing once you have pushed the button on the timer. Another benefit of tracking your time is that you have the evidence of how long everything has taken you. You have evidence to discuss with your advisor how long it will take for you to finish the task. And with that evidence, it's going to make it transparent to how you organize your project plan, your whole Gantt chart will it need to shift. And last but not the least, I never share the time I tracked with anyone but myself. It's just a way that I can know my ability as a researcher on how fast I can finish certain tasks. It increased my ability to focus. It's a score that I keep to myself, how fast I have gone in that project and whether or not I am stronger than yesterday. And in research, we don't really have huge milestone to celebrate success. And to me, that's an important reward system I created. And I will feel that little joy of knowing I'm writing a lot faster than one year ago. I'm a lot more able to focus and stick to the task than one year ago when I started my writing in 30 minutes. With the same 30 minutes of writing time, I am now able to do a lot more than before. I'm spending less time in the lab dwelling myself and draining energy and dwelling on projects. So I hope this motivates you to give this a try. It's really not for anybody else. It's just for yourself. You are knowledgeable about your ability to work and that's going to give you so much more confidence when you are working with someone. I don't always track every activity down to the minute. On my lab activity meeting, I'll just type how many hours I've spent. I, what I will take notes down to the minute are tasks that are daunting. For example, researching papers, identifying the right paper to cite, getting my figure legends written, building a figure for my paper making a poster, making a PowerPoint for a conference presentation. I think as a researcher, I feel a lot more confident about how much I could work in the week because when I know I have a conference coming up, I know I just need three hours in the week to be good at making sure that talk is being well done. In the past, the anxiety of traveling to a conference and leaving the country was immense. Part of myself was shut down and I couldn't do extra work in the lab because I have so much stress about preparing the best for the conference. That's the advantage of knowing your speed. Keep track of your time and your score. You will be more confident and capable as a researcher. That's conclude my tip for how to become a more productive researcher doing more with less time. Please make sure to share this video with your friends that you think who might need this little advice that might benefit from this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button so that YouTube will know that this is good content and will suggest to other people in the future and that could help some more PhD out there that may be needing this content. I hope you give it a try and you can interact with me through Instagram and my Facebook page. They are all named PhD Coffee Time. I'd love to know more about how you motivate yourself day to day as a scientist. Do you know your speed and how do you track, keep track of it? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.